Sorry, we're closed. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. Take two of episode <laughs> 58, right? 58, I forget now that yeah, I- Yeah, 58. 58. Um, and I brought on my lovely producer, Miranda Branco. Um, and uh, we now don't have Wi-Fi problems, right, Miranda? Yeah, uh, we should be good, hopefully. Uh, yeah, listen, it's it's already much better. But it's like, like we talked about pre-show and in take one of the first show, um, I get all the time. I, you know, your name gets thrown in. You know, when I talk to people about what guests I should bring on on Twitter, your name gets thrown in the mix all the time. Uh, so I think people want to know a little bit more about you. You know, you're you're okay. the behind the scenes. You're pretty much what <laughs> makes this thing go. I am the one that just talks into the microphone. Uh, so you know, first off, your recent grad of Sacred Heart, which yes. we just found out also in Take One that uh, we graduated very similar Wait times. Within the same week, yeah. Within the, within the same week. However, <laughs> you graduate with your master's. I graduated with my undergrad approaching 30 years old. It's uh, okay. It's okay. Hey, listen, it took some <laughs> still, time, but we got there. You you did it, so it's you fine. Know. And then we, you know, celebrated together in Boston. Which yeah, uh, we did. Which was a great time. I can't go into the specifics of what we did, but it was a great time. Uh, no, because, it was. You yeah. uh, told me you told everyone that I made you look good. So that's all that matters. <laughs> yeah, <you> do. <laughs> I, we were, I was talking with uh, my brother. Uh, he does his own podcast as well. And uh, we were talking about, you know, what you do for the show and all that stuff. I was like, if I ever lost her, people would know immediately because the, the <laughs> it would just go so amateur hour about my Instagram stories. It'd be just like me po- like writing him on Instagram. So I have a new episode, guys. <laughs> He's <laughs> a text feature. Was- hey, guys, guess what? <laughs> <laughs> so, listen, I'm very thankful that you're on the show. You've helped me out tremendously. Uh, I get responses all the time from buddies asking, you know, who does my, my work? Cause they know it's not me. So they're like, who's doing, who's doing all the work for you. Um, and you do a, you do a tremendous job for those of you that don't know, I put out the episode and I, I record the episode, send it to Miranda. Miranda then takes it and puts it on to anchor and, and then sends me Instagram stories, sends me Instagram posts. I'm big on reels and TikTok right now. So she sends me things that are formatted for that and like a bunch of different options. It's not just one option where uh, I can, I have to post this only thing, but it's, it's, it, she does a tremendous job and most people have no clue that she's doing, that she's doing as much work as she actually is. Um, so I'm very grateful. How have you enjoyed working uh, for me, working for, sorry, we're closing pretty much. You, we originally distinguished you as the producer of the podcast, but in reality now you're pretty like we put in your Twitter bio, you're, you're the producer of my life. Yes. I remember you texting me saying, Hey, you have a, I think you get, what'd you say? I was getting a promotion. Um, and I'm being the producer of your life now. So I said, okay, that's fine. Yeah. Because there's <laughs> just so much more when I first broke down, you know, the, the podcast and all that stuff, it was like, all right, this is what I need. And then I was upping because of the podcast. I was started upping my social media game. Yep. And I was like, oh, okay, well now I need to like, my whole life needs to be better at this. I need, I can't just post it. <laughs> Cause remember I was going through a time there where I would only post on the podcast and now like, interactions and engagement was yeah. down. And I was like, well, I get, it. I'm only posting advertisements for my podcast. Like it has to be other stuff and then mix in the podcast. Yep. yep. Uh, so we learned. So and then Miranda got promoted to producer of my life. <laughs> And, uh, and listen, we've been on a roll since the new year, since the last two months, we have done a great job. We've been doing, we've been like fast track, like going, going pretty well. Yeah. We've been, we've been doing great. So what made you get into this type of work, like the media producing world? Like, well, how'd you get involved in this? So I started out in high school. Um, I go to a, I went to a small town high school. I went to kindergarten with pretty much everyone I graduated with I think I graduated a class of like 90 something kids oh, wow. um we don't have shops uh we don't have like any of those types of things it was mostly just academics and we were really good at academics but we had a media production and for morning announcements it was BD TV so Blue Devil Television okay and I I got put into it accidentally freshman year and everyone's like don't do it it's horrible uh you need to change out of it like right now but I stuck out I was like you know what it was an accident, but it was a good accident. And it clearly was a great accident because here I am with my master's degree in media. Um, but yeah, so I started out in my freshman year of high school back in 2009, I think. So, so that was um, the year I graduated high school. Yes. Yeah. Yep. I graduated. I started in 2009. So I graduated in 2013. So I did media every year. Uh, I actually went to my undergrad degree for 
um, marine biology. Really? Yeah. And I was like, I, I don't know why I'm doing this. And I went to English. <laughs> I did English and communication. So, you know, writing and talking, pretty much what I'm good at. Fair enough. And, Fair enough. You know. So I, yeah. if you remember episode, I think it was 50. So we're on 58. That means yes. Alan was 56 and Brandon was 54. Correct. Brandon, if you remember, if you if you paid attention at all while you're trying to while you're trying to edit it and produce it, but Brandon <laughs> spoke about a story um, where he got into the media game solely because he forgot to like hand in paperwork to transfer out of. Yeah, that he said that he got called for journalism and he didn't want to say no, so he yeah. just said okay. Yeah. Pretty much the same thing as what I did. Yeah. Just crazy that we are <laughs> like how how life works and how you end up where you end up. Just completely. Yeah you know whatever it's forgetting to say no or like whatever that all of a sudden now it's your life it's like how yeah. it how it started is so intriguing to me um and now you're you were supposed to write you're supposed to intern at harvard athletics yes yeah, so i had a 13 month um harvard athletics internship and because of covid that didn't happen and i was also supposed to be a reporter for the cape cod baseball league mainly for the wareham gatemen but for everyone um obviously that didn't happen because of you know, COVID as well. But when I had a class in grad school, this is how we started even talking about things. I got a pitch. We had to learn how to do pitches. So if we ever wanted to create our own show and you were the host of mine and this is how everything happened. So I got to ask, we've, <laughs> we've dove into this a little bit too over drinks, um, yes. shit, but I, I, I got to, let's, let's get more in depth here. First off, okay. how did you come across me ever? Like just on Twitter? Is that where you found me? Uh, yeah, so I was a big Section 10 fan. I'm really close with Steve. I hung out with all the guys for a little bit. Yeah. Um, baseball tavern, stuff like that. Rest um, yeah, so sad. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't talk about it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I was, I've been a Section 10 fan for a while. I actually don't listen to any podcast anymore because we do our own that I don't want to listen to anyone else talk, which is probably bad. And I miss listening to podcasts, but, you know, we're busy. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> yeah, I, I listen. I I listen to my I'm, my own podcast, uh, mainly just to make sure that like I like the way it sounds. I like how I sound from, yeah. from like a, an audio perspective, but also like how I'm speaking and try to get better at it. So every Monday and Thursday mornings, I actually I work out to my own podcast, which is kind of narcissistic, <laughs> but also interesting. <laughs> but also like that's where like you'll get a text from me at like eight forty five in the morning and be like, yes, I think my audio was off, and that's why because I'm literally <laughs> working out while listening to my own podcast um but steve few times yeah oh well the few times that our audio didn't upload the whole thing you're like why is this only 16 minutes I was like i don't know let me fix it that's true so it's good it's good it definitely comes in handy i can i can yeah. get things quickly um i've been at the gym before and for, when i because i just recently passed off the the putting it up on anchor and and doing all that to you and one yep. of the reasons was because I at sometimes forgot, you know, bar industry is very popular during the weekends, obviously. So I'm there a lot. I'm, I'm doing things. And I'm, most of the times I would come home Sunday night, late night and do, do like do the upload and get it ready. But every now and again, you forget. And I remember I had one of the I forget, I realized I forgot once because uh, I was at the gym when running, going to listen to it and I couldn't find it. <laughs> I was like. Did I forget to put this up? Jeez. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, I remember. I texted you a few times. I was like, hey, did you uh, did you schedule something on Anchor? You're like, no, not yet. I'm like, okay. Yep, yep, yep. That's, that's, that's yep. me. That's me for you. Because <laughs> if you guys are not, Miranda's getting crash course and working with that <laughs> light. It is, it's, it's, it's a roller coaster. You never know. I'm always in, I'm almost always in a good mood. I've never been, I really never get mad about anything. You but yeah, no. I forget things. I, I, and then I, I also, and you, we know this, I have big plans that usually get dwindled to very small plans. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh yes. We know. <laughs> Just like the show. I remember the show I wanted the, not really, it was supposed to be like kind of like a docu-series. Yes. For Green Rock, which also would have been the drama that was behind around that, that this, this fall at Green Rock, it would have been an amazing television show, <laughs> but I had these plans and they just didn't work out. They did it. They just, it was, I was busy doing stuff, actually running the bar. So I, what I yeah. needed was someone, I probably needed you to be down there um, to really make it work because I need someone like doing that stuff, uh, yeah. like producing it and making sure it runs. I couldn't be doing both. That was the issue. And then my, the camera guy that we had on, he's a nice guy. Just he's used to shooting green rock in normal times where girls are, you know, chugging white claws and everyone's mm -hmm. taking shots. Yeah. And I remember the first, the first group of stuff that we got, me and you got, we sat there and talked like none of this is usable. 
Yeah, I was like, so they're not wearing their mask. I don't want you to get in trouble. And yeah. this is great footage, but not during COVID times. But no, and it, and there's, always, there's always next year. There's always next year. But it, <laughs> it, and it didn't, it wasn't at all what I was going. It was almost like a promo for Green Rock. I didn't want a promo for yeah. Green Rock. I yeah. want it. I'm trying to get like a little more in depth stuff, like being behind the scenes, seeing what goes on with all this stuff. Um, and it just didn't work out. So that's one of my big plans that I had that turned into a no plan. <laughs> Um, we got some green rock promos work out of it, but that was, that was about it, which was kind of frustrating, but yeah, you're getting a crash course into working for me. And it's, I can't imagine it's always easy. Well, no, but I text you and I check in and I think, you know, maybe I'm annoying you, but I'm like, Hey, just checking in. Cause I'm not sure if you're paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> like, I always, heard from you. <laughs> yes. She, the best part about Miranda, she's always, she'll check in. If I'm behind on something, she'll check in like two or three times throughout the day or like throughout two days and uh but so it's very nice so he's like hey <laughs> did you do this yet and i'll be like no i'm not i'm, I'm doing something right now oh okay just checking just checking <laughs> and see ya I'll, I'll text you in five hours <laughs> yeah i'll be like so did you get a guest You're like no not yeah i'm like okay just asking just wanted to put my week out <laughs> the, the guest portion of this whole thing is is a pain as you can imagine yeah. like trying to schedule i remember i'm and like my twitter inbox is like a lot of people trying to get me as their as a guest for their show and i'm all the yeah. time i'm always been like yeah no, no, i'll do it and then i like i never really do it and then i was i'm busy with my own stuff and then i always say yes i try to say yes to as many people as i can but it's it's difficult and so i understand yeah. the game like when my my old ba- baseball buddies are like kind of dragging their feet on it i understand why i did the same shit so i get it but it's like trying to get it all together while also simultaneously running a restaurant is uh can be stressful at times can be very stressful Oh, of course but again you've made my life tremendously easier uh but you are now so it's, we started in august right so it's august you know september october november De- december january we're six months in a half year into this this will be episode 58 58 episodes six months in <laughs> yeah because we, well we started talking in like mid-june july but we didn't start anything until august so it's yeah. been a while so you, we, we never, I just realized we never got the full story. You're friends with Steve, you're section 10 fan. Oh yeah. So um, for the class, we had to learn how to make a pitch. So we had to go through the whole process. Um, my professor is actually on the Dan Patrick show. He's a great man. No big deal. Um, and he, yeah, no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's actually, he's a really good teacher and he like pushed us. He gave us options and he was like, that's a dumb option. Try again. So I was like, okay, try again. Um, so what I pitched, what did I even pitch to you? So it's kind of like a drunk history, but not because I, I found you on Twitter because of like section 10, you just get like, you do think of the bar stool. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, this guy would be great talking and like having drinks. He owns a bar. You could be having some drinks, like shooting the shit and getting, I think the story was, I wanted you to talk to the players and get their side of like the biggest moments of their life. Yes. And it was like, Hey, so we see it through like, you know, Nesson is broadcasting it or we see it like we watch it on TV, but we don't know what's going through your head. And as a baseball player, you know, things that we don't. So I was like, oh, Pat would be great to just have a drink at his bar with people and we can see the other side of the story that we don't know. I'm, I'm telling you. Um, so she DM'd me that uh, that pitch. Yeah, well, actually, I tweeted it. Tweeted I it. said tweeted I it. I typed out the tweet and I looked at it for about 45 minutes before I pressed send. And then I turn my phone off and it's like sending like a risky text, but it wasn't because it was Twitter and it was you. And I was like, well, oh, I don't know what to do. And I was like, okay, whatever. I sent it and I turned my phone off for like a half hour before I answered you. I respect that. How quickly did I answer? <laughs> uh, pretty, pretty quick. Cause I think I tweeted something about, uh, I'll go back and find it and post it. But um, I think I tweeted something about, it just made a show idea and like Pat Light would be the greatest host for it. And you're like, what was the idea? Oh, so then yes. like, that's, that's how we started talking. Yes. And yes. It, you were already thinking about doing the podcast. So it kind of just worked out. Yes. And there you have it, folks. That is the birth <laughs> of Sorry We're Closed right there. Because I still think that eventually, I love this podcast. It will probably continue for many years. But I still think there is a phenomenal talk show opportunity oh, for, God, yeah. for me to be sitting at the bar drinking with, with a buddy and just shooting the shit and going over stuff. And like when I talk to it about, you know, talk to it with Carabas, we're talking with Hubs, talked about it with Marty Mush or any of those, you know, Barcelona, because you, as everyone knows, Barcelona is kind of like 
Like you look up to like pitching coaches and stuff like that in baseball. Barstool is kind of like the media people that I, that I, that was the, that's the people that I know that I think are yeah. good at what they do. And I'm like, okay, when I have a question, I ask those guys and we, and we go with things. And depending on what ideas we have is, you know, sometimes they, they're and you know, Barstool guys, they're very honest. So sometimes like Pat, that's one of the worst ideas I've ever heard in my life. Uh, so it's like, okay, that idea will move, check and we'll move on to the next one. But, <laughs> You know, those guys have helped, been very helpful. And the really the biggest thing was because the whole plan was that it was during COVID. No one could come to my bar. We had to be closed at the time. So it was I had an empty bar to use at my disposal. This is perfect. Uh, and it, what I didn't realize is that during it's very difficult to get everyone to come to my bar to, to shoot this. Um, and even even with people in New York City, which is right across the river, it was like hubs was hubs would do it, but Jared was in the process and uh, moving back to Boston. So it was tough for him to do it. Like it, everyone is always like, they're caught up in their own lives. Yeah. Um, so it was remember, very good. Well, I was gonna say, I remember the beginning, we were going to start earlier, but we couldn't figure out how to get people in and stuff like that. So we didn't push the podcast out right away. Yes. Yeah. We had yeah, pushing it off. And I did. And I, I'm very happy looking back now. I did my first ever episode in the bar. One of the worst yes. video quality of oh all gosh, time. The light. Oh I know God. the lighting there <laughs> was terrible. Um, but you had I, fluorescent lights behind your head. Uh, <laughs> so not great with the cameras like, you know, facing you, but we learned, we learned it so much better now. You already knew that. I just had to learn. <laughs> But yeah, so that was, that is how it started um, and how we kind of progressed to this part. And now like, you know, listen, it's a, it's a, and now we're 58 episodes in, we're six months in and it just goes to show you, you know, send the tweet out and turn your phone off for 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, I mean, Twitter's a, gr- Twitter's a great marketing tool, especially for like, you know, the field that we're in, the career field, like sports media and Twitter, like best friends. And I don't think I would be here right now if I didn't, you know, have anxiety. And I could have tweeted it before and I just didn't, but it ended up working. It but did. like, if I didn't tweet it and I didn't like follow you on Twitter, this would never happen. No, we've never, we would never have been doing this. And I always, yeah. I wanted to do a podcast for a while. Didn't know what I wanted to do or anything like that, but wanted to do a podcast for a while. But one of the things that held me back was having help because I didn't want, I'm very, I, I, I really, I am in, in some ways a perfectionist and I need certain, I need to look pro. Like I don't want to put something on social on my own. I've grown, I've worked too hard to grow the, the small following that I have right now. <laughs> I didn't, I can't put shit out. And, and, you know, and I always told you that, you know, she, she doesn't ask so much anymore because she knows I'll tell her, but Miranda always used to ask, do you like what I'm putting, giving you? Like, do you like these options? Do you like this? And I always, I, I'm, I am nice. And I always was just telling her that I loved what she was doing, but it was honest. I did love what you were sending me and I still do. And I, there are, have been instances where I was like, well, no, can we do this instead? Because I am like, I need something. Like if I don't yeah. like something, I'm going to tell you, like, I need a, I'm going to do it nicely. I'm not going to be like, this is shit, Miranda, even though you've never sent me shit. Uh, but it, like you, you have to. Well, have you that. either don't. You don't say. You either don't say anything, and it's great. But I didn't know that at first. So I was mm-hmm. like, "Hey, do you like any of the things I'm sending you? Because I'm sending you a lot of things." Or you're like, "Oh, can you just add swipe up to that?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I can do that." Literally, <laughs> most of the, that's almost all. Yeah. Like, right in the beginning, that was like the the only thing I had to ever. I was like, sometimes you forget to swipe up, and so like, oh, yep. can you put swipe up in there? Because if I put it on there, it's gonna look like shit. Um, okay. And so now, but now they gave a there's a there's a light there's something sometimes. There's like a thing on uh, Instagram that gives you like just this, just a small little arrow that, and you've seen me use it before. Yeah. I, that looks pro. I yep. can use that and it, it does well. Uh, but it was, it, it's been such a unique learning, like how the, I, you know, the, the stuff that I'm getting now, even since October is better than like you are growing as far as like what you've been giving me, like the, the Instagram stories. Now, if you just looked at the Instagram stories from then to now. Oh my God. Yeah. There's there so are different and yeah and the thing is like I don't even know what we're doing now was possible like there I was like oh this is good shit this is good shit you just see the slow progression of oh this is even better shit like this is this is yep. some good stuff and it's just about doing it constantly over and over again and I think that's we had, the repetitiveness and the um, the ability to be consistent with this I think has helped uh, both of us get better at it. Yeah. And knowing what we like and knowing like our brand and stuff like that, it's grown. So, you know, you stick to the same things and, you know, this is trending right now in media. So let's do more of these effects than others. But yeah, we burn a lot. 
Yes. And it's amazing. And I, I'm sure you didn't know. Well, you might have had an idea because of your your degree and working with the guy, the your professor who you know, works on the Dan Patrick show. But going into this, I did not know how much work is involved in, in all of these things. And if I was doing your job along with my own, which a lot of people do starting off their own podcasts, um, not everyone's as fortunate as I was to have a phenomenal uh, <laughs> producer tweet at me. Um, but it's a lot of work. Like yeah. a crazy amount. Yeah. And it's, it's Which just is funny because I'm, Go ahead. Well, I'm used to doing live broadcasts. So I'm used to doing live sports broadcasts. So that type of work compared to the work we're doing is still a lot, but it's completely different. So it's like a whole winning curve for me. Cause okay, I'm like, oh, I'm used to the live stuff. Like you have to get it right the first time. If it's wrong, it's still gonna go out live and it's gonna be wrong and you're gonna get yelled at. And the back room during a live broadcast is like very stressful, very high energy. And it works great, but it's like, if you mess up one thing, you're getting yelled at. And now it's like on ESPN <laughs> or it's on sports center and you know that you messed up, but it's still on sports center. But for like this, I can edit it and I can fix it before we post it. Mm -hmm. So it's like, Oh wait, so do you like this? Cause I can still edit it. And that was like a whole learning curve for me. Cause I'm so used to the fast pace of, okay, it's out. Like I'm, we're taping it and it's out right now. Like a live stream pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very different. And we've talked about doing that live stream stuff, but yeah, I, this is yeah. definitely uh, a little more relaxed than working in the back room at ESPN uh, yeah. for sure. Sorry, we're close. It's a much <laughs> different operation. Uh, but actually, I've, I never got to tell you, and I, it reminded me of it talking about it is, um, you know what my mother told me when I told her that you had your master's degree? What? She says, and she's working for you? And I was like, <laughs> mother? I <laughs> Why is that such a problem? So like, Patrick, she has her master's degree. Like, what the hell? We, we, you're not, you shouldn't have someone working if you have a master's degree. You're not. And I was like, oh my God, I love her. we are doing a good thing here. We have a good operation going here. Why is it so concerning? Like, like someone oh with a master's degree wouldn't want to work for me. I'm very, I was very disappointed in my mother. <laughs> she had zero faith in me, apparently. Oh, that's great. That's no, great. It's not great, Miranda. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible that my mother would think that of me that some why would anyone with their master's degree want to work for pat i think we're doing great we are doing great we it, are it was just a great comment but we, we are doing great and i wouldn't change anything so yeah, that mo my mom listens to every episode so <laughs> that's why i brought that up i wanted her to hear <laughs> from the horse's mouth that it is going great and it is no no issues on this end so um we got i'm, I'm a little curious with the for this a uh, little bit of a six-month prediction from you We've, we've knocked out the first six months. What do you see when we get to that, that first year anniversary mark? What do you see? How much more have we, have we progressed, do you think? I mean, the first six months is insanity how much we've progressed. I can't imagine where we'll be in August. See, and that's hard because we've gone so far in so little time. I'm hoping, you know, people can go back to Fenway Park and maybe we can be there for one day and get some content, even before a game, like, or just show up to Fenway Park and be outside and like I can film you doing the podcast outside or even just like, you know, take a tour and have Pat Light take a tour of Fenway Park. But like something like that, maybe like actually like go out and do something. Uh, that, so I give, nothing, us, I give us six months. Nothing would please me more. <laughs> and uh, I guess that when I, I did that with with Jared um, it's for, for Section 10 stuff and yeah, it was him. It was uh, Bryn. And myself, usually, maybe yeah. sometimes we have one other person, but yeah, Brand would always, you know, film Jared and all this stuff. And I was always so jealous of how much content Jared would be able to get after just one, have just one game. And it's like stuff he can use yep. for the whole week. And I was like, God, I would love to have someone, you know, next to me doing this for me. So every now and again, Brand would ask me my th take, but I was completely caught off guard when she would do it. And I'd be like, uh, yeah, that sucks. And I was, it was completely clock I was like, stop, stop filming me, Bryn. I'm just here for moral support for Jared. Um, yep. But this, if we do it this year, I'm, I got to have you. You're gonna, I'm going to tell Jared that you're coming with me uh, because okay. it, I need that stuff. That, con that content at Fenway Park is so crucial. Yes. Or even just content in general because I only have so many photos of you when you were – you know, in the MLB that we keep using over and over again, but it's like, yeah, it works, but it's like, do you know how great it would be to have new content and like you at Fenway Park, people would love that. People so would it's like, love you just that. Need to... 
Also, a little Good. subtle dagger there telling me that I didn't play Major League Baseball that long, so we don't have any fi- pictures of me. So that's I, that's your that's your first There's warning, Miranda. There's only so Miranda. many headshots. <laughs> you only have fir- so many headshots. Believe me, I know. My old Instagram, <laughs> when I just posted my, I post pictures of me in baseball, I had none left. I had to do something else. <laughs> There's like 10 pictures of me on Google. That's it. <laughs> Oh, I know. I researched you very well. Uh, I know. And Amy, there, there's one picture in particular that people use with me. Um, I don't know if you've seen my latest TikTok, but it was uh, this guy that um, was rating professional athletes that he'd love to go out and have a drink with. I was on the list and they use, everyone, everyone for some reason uses this damn picture. And I look horrible in the picture. I hate the picture, but for whatever reason, everyone chooses that one. So I'm starting to think if maybe I'm the only one that doesn't like how I look in it and everyone's like, oh, this is be a, this is a good one. He'll like this one. And I absolutely despise the picture. completely. <laughs> I don't know why it is, but I hate it. It might be like one of the first ones in Google and they don't want to try to find any harder ones. So they just go with that one. Lazy people. I think Jared <laughs> did it too, though. And I know that they don't, they don't, no. they're not lazy people over there. He, no, I remember, I, you know, can you use a different picture, Jared? I look like an absolute moron. I'm like, I'm like in a Red Sox uniform, like looking back. And I'm just like, why, why is that? That's what you're known for. That's, that that's what just what you're for. known for. That is what I'm known for. I'm known for the look back. Uh, but it is, it is, it's very frustrating that we use this damn picture constantly. <laughs> uh, but so you given the six month prediction, you have, you've yeah. been, you've already been here for six months. I, I think, yep. I think, Baseball, baseball just put out a proposal, by the way. If you haven't seen my retweet, you did see my retweet? Yes. yes. Uh, I get notifications, remember? Oh, yes, you do. Oh, that's tough some days. Yes. Um, yes. You're, you're my I boss. Get, I have to. Yeah. I, <laughs> listen, I get Jared's notifications sometimes. And like every now and again, I'll turn them on and off, depending on it. If you, when you, in, in a, during a Red Sox game, your phone just never stops going off. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Absolute <laughs> constant barrage of, of tweets from Jared. I know when you're busy at work and I know when you're just hanging out at Green Rock waiting for like work to start. Cause I was like, Oh, he's tweeting a lot. He must just be sitting at the bar waiting for people to come in. Exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> I have a, I have a group of friends. I have pretty much every Friday. Um, I have uh, one group of friends that comes in at 8 PM every Friday and another group of friends. That it's all the parcel guys come in at 8 PM pretty much every Friday. And so I get, get over there around five to open, but there's not a whole lot for me to do. Like I'm more like yep. as the manager on duty, at Green Rock, I pretty much, uh, you know, if they had any questions, like my staff has any questions, I answer it for them or try to answer it for them. Uh, but for the most part, all I do is handle the money in the beginning of the night, handle the money at the end of the night. And in between, you entertain people. You help people have fun, like all that. That's kind of how the Green Rock model has always been to have a young manager on that knows everyone in town that you can have fun with. Um, so that's what I typically do. So when, until 8 p.m. though, I'm not entertaining anyone. So until 8 p.m. hits, I am just tweet, 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 tweet. And, uh, and oh, yeah, yeah. So now you know. And then, you know, then, then for your notifications, it goes absolutely silent for the rest of the night. <laughs> yes. I don't even have the little notification like circle on my Twitter. I get like the vibrate and like it shows up in my like home screen. But if I saw like the circle of like, 15 notifications i'd be like cat tweeted how many times today <laughs> so like i just don't do it to myself oh well there you go also by the way <laughs> 19 days of christmas yeah i, said, I saw I, that you saw see i mean i'm not confident that two of the people live in canada i am not confident that they're <laughs> going to be receiving that gift i'm just not i tried i i googled it i went but you the you the post office i don't know if anyone does work at the post office they suck they are horrible. They do not care about your job in any capacity. I was on the phone with them trying to trying to print labels, you know, get the right ones out, all that stuff. And the, the lady gave me attitude. I was like, I'm trying to hand your company money. I guess it's not her company. She's just an employee. But still, I'm trying to, trying to do some work here. And they just they were just horrible. But I eventually got them out. And at least two people have shown me they got them. They got them. Did you use the list I made you? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so I got the right. It got the information is correct. Okay. It's whether or not the because the um, the address I had to look up how to do Canadian addresses. Yeah, that's because weird. They were a little. They were a little weird. I figured it out, but the Canadian, like the way, like I had to go through customs, and I didn't know if I was picking doing like the right, but like clicked boxes. I you know got to check certain boxes of what what the package is. I didn't know if I was doing that right and if it was going to the right place for customs. And then like if maybe if it goes to the wrong place for customs, they just send it back or they just throw it away. I don't know. 
So I'm not, con- I'm confident with everyone in the United States. I am 0% confidence level out for the Canadian people, but I tried. And now it's live that I told people that I tried. <laughs> well, that's all I can do, right? That's all we can do. Do. So <laughs> the real, I think in the next six months we might do, it'll be online, but I think the one thing that's the most intriguing to me right now is that live show that we've discussed yeah. um, and doing it. I don't know. Would you do it on Instagram live? How would, you, how, would we, how would we record it though? Oh, there's ways that you can connect like an actual camera to go Instagram live. You could also do YouTube live because um, we have our YouTube back up and running. So do. I'm get, I, I, I get email. I get emails for new subscribers and stuff like that. It's going up. Thanks to you. Appreciate that. I'm trying. Appreciate that. <laughs> It's all about the thumbnail. And I haven't seen the, I haven't yeah. seen the recent thumbnails, but it's all about the thumbnail. Oh, I stopped sending them to you. You told me I had free range. So I just oh, started. Completely. I, you're, you have 100% tr- confidence for me. I have no. And also you have to understand, I don't know what the hell I'm doing on YouTube. So like, it's not like on Instagram or TikTok where I'm trying to I'm, I have a fear, I have a, like a knowledge base here of trying to do certain things and what works, what doesn't work. Like I've been posting on my Instagram for 20 years. Well, not 20 years, you know, 10 years. So I have like, an, and I've been following the analytics. So I have a little bit of an idea of what, what my followers want to see, what they don't want to see. So I can help you there. YouTube lost, no clue yep. have any capacity to help you there. So I'm just like, go for it. You can't do worse than me. I promise <laughs> you. So uh, yeah, you have complete free reign over there, but yeah, it's going well. Yeah. But I mean, we I need people so. to tune in. And I would know I, how many subscribers do we have over YouTube, like 300, 400. Yeah, not a lot, but more than we started with. So at least that's good. We're moving. We, I, when I first started uh, going back to this, we were at like 110. Yeah. Um, so we, we're doing well. We're growing there. Uh, it just takes a while. And I'm, again, I'm not as good at it as, as growing on YouTube as I am elsewhere. And YouTube, I think, is a really good place for that content you talked about, like at Fenway and stuff like that, like the, yep. that stuff, more so than just the me and you talk, like me and my guests talking. Um, because like, I, think, I think people would, I think most people would rather just listen to the podcast rather than you know, watch yeah. the podcast, but you know, what the hell do I know? Right. I'm only six months into this day. <laughs> so I'm glad, but I'm, glad, I'm glad to hear that you're happy working for the, for working for me. I'm, I'm hopefully I'm somewhat easy to work for. Oh, absolutely. Um, okay, good. Uh, I'm happy <laughs> to hear that. Uh, and, uh, you know, who knows, maybe, uh, a move to Hoboken is in, in your future in the next couple of years. It could be. Yeah. I mean, you're not that far away. In the, you're not that far away in the first place. So no, I could just be easy. there. And, and it's, I think, I think to your point as well earlier in the summer, I spent a lot of my time in Boston. Uh, so uh, I think being, having you in Boston is kind of like the same thing. Like, I'm, you know, I don't really, yeah. need, you don't really need to be in Hoboken really. Not yet, at least. Uh, yet. Now, and I don't know uh, the expense, the, the rent here is outrageous. So I'm sure it's, you know, it's similar if you try to move to Boston, but uh, it's just, you know, save your money because it's not worth it. <laughs> But Miranda, listen, the, um, the, the people that are fans that are closed, I can, I can say sincerely that I'm sure they thank you as well for everything you've done for the show. Uh, I'm glad they have a little bit of background on you now. I have a little bit more, they have a little bit more context to uh, you and what you do for the show uh, because you're going to be around until you decide to leave me, uh, which I'm always, but (laughs) Every, every time, every now and again, well, you'll text me, like, Hey, can we, can we talk about something? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Mom. And then I'm like, this is, this is when she tells me Jeez, <laughs> I'm gonna have to, you know, start editing these damn things myself. And I have no clue what I'm doing. Oh uh, my God. I'd never do that to you. I go, oh, yeah, thank you. I remember you, uh, <laughs> you, you were telling me you were doing some side stuff. You were doing some side projects, which I think are exciting. Right. Wh- which, which ones are you doing? Are you allowed to talk yeah. about on there? Oh yeah, I can talk about it. Tell, tell um, the people. So I'm going to, a uh, photojournalist for WPRI, which is a kind of local news station, but kind of big news station. Um, so that's part time. And of course, he said, I can do whatever I want regarding podcast, uh, podcast wise, as long as I don't put any commercials on other channels. So I was like, mm-hmm. okay, that's fine. So like, we can't put like a Sire We're Closed commercial if we ever made one on like channel 10 news because I'm channel 12 news. Oh, I that's see. That's pretty much it. That's all he cared about. He's like, yeah, so he's like, you can do whatever you want. Just don't, you know, broadcast that you're on a podcast on a different station. I was like, oh, okay. That makes sense. You probably just want yeah. to compete with, you know, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. yeah, we'll do that. We may be able to put a Sorry We're Closed podcast or uh, commercial. <laughs> yeah, we could do that. <laughs> you know the numbers. You tell me if it's worth it. Um, so, yeah. but so that you're doing that, was that, that was the only project you're doing? Yeah, I mean, I work part, I work like, 
if my town community stations need it, like I help out the fire stations a lot. So you've seen my fire videos and yep. stuff. Um, but yeah. other than that, no, they just sorry you're closed. Yeah. So listen, yeah. you're, you're, you're doing, you're, I don't, I, I, when you told me that I was like, oh, she's leaving. There she goes. Okay. <laughs> All right, six months in. That's good. We had a good run. Uh, but then you're like, no, 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 and I was no. Like, I, don't uh, want to I hope you're not mad. I know. I was like, uh, and, yeah. and when you told me, I was like, oh, yeah, I just assumed you were doing a bunch of other things on the side anyway. Um, but I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, listen, I, if you ever leave, just know I won't be surprised. <laughs> you're completely out of my league in the producer world anyway. Well, so. But listen, I'm, I'm very appreciative of you for coming on. Uh, I know it was kind of last minute that I asked oh, of you. Of course. Uh, you were at brunch. Uh, but I, I was at brunch. I, I appreciate <laughs> you coming back, coming and, and joining me on Sorry We're Closed, episode 58. I don't forget this time. Um, and I'm sure, as I tell most of my guests recently, because I've absolutely loved everyone that I brought on. I don't know if you've noticed this, but almost after everyone, no, I'm, like, people. I'm like, I, at the end of almost all of my guest episodes, I'm like, this will not be the last time I ask you to come on. So I want to give them preemptive str- warning that this will, I've, I've loved these people so much that they've come on. They provide the thing that I, I when we talked about the beginning of Sorry We're Closed, I did it. So it wasn't just a baseball podcast. I didn't want to just corner myself and ha- I, you know, I wouldn't have been able to bring Alan Owens. Um, I wouldn't have been able to bring uh, Larry McDonald, who is that the New York Times bestselling author for the finance world. Like, yeah. I wouldn't be able to bring these guys on on just a baseball exclusive podcast. It doesn't really, it's not really on brand, but because we've gone yep. so general, I can go so many different places with it and trying to book guests makes it very helpful as well, because I have such so much more people I can kind of a uh, pool of people that I can pull from. Uh, yeah. But listen, I'm very appreciative of you, Miranda. You do a great job, even when I don't Thank answer you. you. And I fall behind on my work. Uh, I'm very appreciative of you do, the, for the work that you do. And you've made my podcast look like a legit thing right from the get-go. Uh, and there's absolutely no way I would have been able to do that myself. So I do I do thank you. Well, thank you. It's, it's been a lot of fun so far. Yes, we well, can only I, go up from here. I, listen, we can only go from <laughs> going. Listen, we're at the bottom. So this is only can go up from here, I promise you. So again, I appreciate it, Miranda. Thank you for coming on. And uh and I mean, I'm going to talk to you right after this because we're going to have to, yes. have to release this podcast tomorrow. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> so that's it. I appreciate you guys listening. Thank you again. For episode 58. I uh, hope you guys had a phenomenal weekend uh, and I hope you have a phenomenal week guys. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for listening to the sorry we're closed podcast. Go subscribe to our email chain over at the and follow us on all social media until next time, guys, I'll see you at the bar. Sorry, we're closed.